So this morning is about single leg strength. So it's a bit of a misnomer calling it single leg strength because actually being able to balance on one leg, which is essentially what we're doing when we're running, we're basically hopping from one leg to the other, is actually a whole body um, thing. To be able to do it really well, you're using your whole body to do it, um, even though you know, you're only on one leg. Everyone thinks it's just uh, glute and hip strength and some strength in the leg, but it's not. Because if you imagine, if you are waving around with your body up top, that's gonna impact everything below. So you want to be strong through your core. You wanna be strong through your back, like we were with our session yesterday. You want that strength in your feet and ankles, because if they're waving around, that's again gonna affect your balance. So just like when we're running, balancing on one leg is a whole body thing. And we kind of, this session is kind of a culmination of everything we've done this week from the glute and hip strength, feet and ankles, and the back strength and core strength. So um, when we're running, if we can be as still and stable as possible on, on one leg, because that's essentially what we're doing, we can use more of our energy to propel us forward. So it is worth spending some time doing this work and getting strong in single leg balance. So let's get going. We're gonna stand with the feet hip distance to start. Nice big breaths in through the nose as we stretch tall, reach to the ceiling. And then as you open up, I just want you to squeeze your bottom, open the arms wide, and really get the chest and back to open and stretch. And then down, big breath in. Stretch up. And let's say we want to be able to stay tall through the spine and open in the chest. So we just gotta make sure that to begin with, we can actually get into that position. So these stretches, they're always nice ones to do pre-run as well, especially if you've been driving or desk working. You know, everyone takes the time to stretch out the hips, or some people do, but take the time to open out your upper body as well. It'll help you with your form above the hips. This time we're gonna reach up, open out, squeeze the bottom, push the hips forward. The next time, staying tall through the spine, we're just gonna bring the hands, interlace them behind the head, press the head gently back into the hands, push the elbows wide, and then we're gonna take the shoulders up to the ears, and then we're gonna draw the shoulders down. So we draw the shoulders up as high as they'll go, and then slide them away from the ears. Keep the elbows pressing wide. Keep those big breaths flowing. Good, next one, draw them up, draw them down and hold them down. I'm just gonna do a bit of side to side, so getting the side of the body stretching. Try not to swing your bottom around. Try and start to feel that connection in the glutes and in the lower abs to just hold everything below the waist super still. You can go over as far as you like, but try and keep the elbows wide. And do one more to each side. Oh, apologies if you can hear me creaking, crunching. Come back to the center, reach up. Stretch and open, roll the shoulders. Let's find that um, neutral alignment. So hips, knees, and ankles in alignment. We're nice and tall through the spine. Much easier to engage your core muscles when you're lifted away. When we collapse forward, you'll find it much harder to engage those core muscles. So think of that piece of string coming from the base of the spine all the way up through and out through the crown of the head. So we're lifting up nice and tall, shoulders draw open. So open across the collarbone and then just tip and tilt the tailbone. So not arching too much through the back, but not tucking under too far either. So find that midpoint, tailbone is down. And then from there, we're gonna find that core engagement. So remember you're thinking below the line of the belly button, below the line of the hips. Inhale nice and tall. At the top of that in-breath, tighten those abs as tight as they'll go. So drawing everything in and then releasing slowly on the out-breath you wouldn't be able to maintain that standing, let alone running. So big breath in. This time pull in halfway, so feel that difference. And then release. And then inhale. Remember, it's just a light connection. Third of the way, release the breath, and you should feel comfortable to breathe and move. The core control is not necessarily uh, well, it's not about bracing and being rock solid through your center. Those muscles work in conjunction with your hips, through your back as well. They all work together, so they don't need to do all of the work on their own. So they don't need to be super tight. So nice and light that you can maintain them. And then from there, really easy, we're just gonna start with some squats. So we're just gonna come up with the arms, down and then up. So just getting the ankles, knees and hips moving, but keeping the chest tall. We're gonna do four and three, 
Try and lift the arms up nice and tall. It helps to encourage the chest to lift and the spine to stay tall. One on the, this one, we're going to come down and we're going to shift the weight, but we're going to try and keep the hip bones level. We're going to shift the weight onto this side. So this one's really light. And then we're going to push up through that standing leg. Come down, same on the other side, down, shift the weight, and then push up through the standing leg. Down, shift the weight, and then push up. So in your own time, you're gonna try and get this leg as light as possible. So you can start to lift the heel on that side. Down, you can start to get it so that the toe is hovering off the floor. Just work to your own level but keep the hip bones level. So um, if you need to bring the arms down like I did, just hold your hips so you can feel where they're level, that's absolutely fine too. The, the arms will just make it a bit more challenging. <laughs> so just work at your own level, let's like say. You will feel you have to deepen that connection because let's like say single leg balance is a whole body thing. Obviously everyone thinks squats, they think legs, but actually to get the weight off of this leg and to bring it up, more core, more back, more everything going on, more strength everywhere to do that single leg work. Shift, bring it up, rise up. We're gonna do two more to each side at your own level. So as I say, you could still be resting on the toe on that trailing side. Shift, get the foot up if you can, rise. One more to each side, down, shift the weight, and then up. Down, shift the weight, and then up. Good, this time come down. We're gonna shift the weight, come up, rise up. Now, if you've not brought your leg up, just bring it into balance now if you can. Arms come out to start. Now we're gonna take this bent leg around and behind us, to, like a uh, curtsy squat. Couldn't think of what it's called then. Then we're gonna drop down, and then you're gonna tap it in. So nice and light with this leg, go back behind and then tap it in. You wanna go as far behind you as possible so that we really get work into that gluten hip. The further forward you go, the more you're gonna work quads, which is fine, but generally it's the glutes and hips that we're weaker in. Down. So those of you that want a bit more, see if you can bring that knee back up. So it taps behind and then it draws back up. Hip bones as level as you can keep them as you do these. Good, and then if you wanna bring the arms in to really challenge the balance, that's the other option. Remember, like I said at the, the, the beginning of the week, these are options for a reason, you'll just work at your level. So if you're still here, that's fine. You'll still be building your strength. <laughs> Good, for four, for three, keep the core engaged, keep lifted in the chest, two, last one, down, come all the way up. Now if you're here, then just sweep the knee behind you so that you've still got a bent leg. If you've got the floor lightly, uh, floor, the foot lightly on the floor, that's fine. Wherever position you're in, we're gonna take the leg out to the side, and back, so you can be here. You could be here. Or you can have the arms in, those are your options. But try to be super stable. Remember this is single leg balance, so although we're moving this leg out to the side and getting a bonus bit of hip work here, it's the standing leg and the pelvis I want you to think about. So if you're here but everything is like this, bring the arms out, Bring the leg down and slide the toe along the floor and just practice holding your balance, holding that hip knee and ankle alignment on this side. Because guaranteed if you can't do it standing, it's not happening when you're running, which means that your landing control, you might be getting a bit of knee in, which is all fine. It's not gonna necessarily cause you any pain or injuries, but one, you won't be as efficient as you run, and two, you may very well end up with injuries and niggles. <laughs> Okay, so remember you're here, or build it up. And we're nice and slow with this leg. Trust me, you'll get more work in this hip with nice, slow, controlled movement than swinging it in and out, simply because you'll spend more time away from the body with the leg, so you have to work harder into the hip. 
Good, let's do five more. Five. For four. Remember, open chest. If we sink here, the hip sinks and then everything's a bit wobbly. So think lift up. Two. Last ones. One. Come down, shake it off. Lovely, let's do the same on the other side. So arms come out, shift the weight onto this side, and then we step around and behind, and then step and tap. So just find your rhythm with the movement first. Remembering that we wanna go big step behind and back so that we get into the glutes. Around and behind, and then back. When you're ready, See if you can make this trailing leg a little bit lighter when it comes in, so that either toe resting or maybe the knee up. Round and behind. Core's working. Like I say, the back's working, feet and ankles are working. So try to keep the big toe, in fact, try to keep all the toes on the floor, but the big toe's usually the one that wants to lift. <laughs> Good, and then if you want to bring the arms in. Good. Remember you're better working here than being all over the place trying to work here. Okay. Good. Let's go for four. Three. Two. And one, come up. Remember you can be here and just sweep the leg behind you. Or you can be here. Or you can be here. Wherever you can keep hip, knee, ankle, and no swinging around with the hips. So hip bones level. And let's say that lovely stability down this standing leg. God, my words are all over the place this morning. I have to be really enunciate so I don't <laughs> mess my words up. I wasn't kidding about the brain drain earlier. Remember, everything's working, so keep that lift. Let's like say, as soon as we start to sag through here, the hip becomes unstable and then everything below is having to work hard, I think. Lift from the crown, nice and tall. That hip comes in, core strong, back strong, feet and ankles are strong, and then all of it becomes a lot easier. Good, four, three. So don't worry if there's, you're constantly having to think about this. It's really concentration at start. You know, it is muscle memory. As soon as you get used to using and coordinating these muscles and motor control, it all becomes easier, but it's, it's practice like anything. Good, one, come down and shake it off. I like to tell people it's like driving a car. When you first drive, you're thinking changing gears, check your mirrors, all of that. You know, once you get more experience, you can drive without even thinking. This is exactly the same. Once you teach the body to work in coordination and to balance, it all becomes very um, unconscious. And I knew I needed my notes because I've completely forgotten what I'm doing next. Ah, so I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to go back to the first leg we're balancing on. We're going to be nice and tall through the spine again. Take the weight into that standing leg. The other leg is just going to slide behind and back. Now you can have a slight hinge at the hip here. Extend the leg and back. And I'm going to build this nice and slow. And again, you just add however much you can do but focus on that standing leg, on that ability to maintain hip, knee, ankle alignment. So if you need to have the arms out, that's fine. Okay, when you're ready, see if you can slide. We're trying to get that extension, by the way. Try not to stint on that. So try not to pause here. Think really extend, because then you'll get that work into the glute max and mimic what we do when we run, which is to really extend the hip and open. See if you can bring the knee up in front. Extend and behind up in front. Let's say you can have a slight hinge from the hip, but try not to collapse forward. Think tall spine, open chest. Good. Again, addition if you want, it's to practice our arm movement. So we want to take the opposite elbow back as we extend the leg and then forward. 
And we want to practice the arm movement because we want to have our arms, ideally, coming forwards and backwards. So it's really common for runners to bring them in front. Again, not a problem, but what you'll find is that tends to encourage a side-to-side -side movement with the body, which is then going to affect how you're moving through the hips and everything below. So if we can keep the arms, opposite arm, <laughs> if we can keep the arms coming straight forward and backward, which is, again, it's just practice. If you practice it here, then it'll become easier to do when you're running. Then we can uh, have a much more stable center. And if you watch elite athletes, they're really still through their torso. All their energy is being used in their arms and legs to drive them forward. When you're ready, another little addition if you want it. As you go back with the leg, you bend into the knee and then up. Bend, whoop. Try to keep the knee out over the foot as you bend. rather than letting the knee roll in. So again, we're practicing that landing control. Lift, lower, lift, lower. Let's see if we can do the last 30 seconds. Good. Lift. Last ones, lift. Good. shake it off. We can do the same on the other side. Now remember, you might feel different side to side. We usually have one side that's weaker than the other or a little bit less stable. So shift the weight, keep that hip knee ankle alignment. Slight hinge from the hip. Start with just sliding the leg away and coming back. Slide and extend, come back. Remember, really extend the hip. So we squeeze into the glutes and get that hip to open. Reach. Return. Remember, arms can be out if you need them out. When you're ready, see if you can bring the leg up in front. So the knee comes up, extends behind. Bring it up. Good. Let's add in the arms if you can. So it's opposite arm. In. Out. And then last addition, if you want it, is that bend into the knee and lift. Let's say you want to make sure that knee is coming straight out over the foot. Try not to roll it in. Good. So everything should feel like it's working. Your back to keep you nice and upright, core, definitely glutes and hips. Feet and ankles as well on that supporting side. Good. Let's go last 20 seconds. Up, down, up. Whoa, sorry, this is my bad side. Don't look at me. I'll throw your, <laughs> I'll throw your balance. Good, last ones. Down and up. Good, shake it off. Lovely, we're actually gonna do a bit of stretching, but we're gonna do it standing so we can carry on that single leg balance. What I'd say is if you're a bit unstable, grab a bit of wall space or a chair. Your aim is to be as light as possible on your hold on that wall or that chair, whatever you're using, so that you use as much of your body to stabilize you as possible. But like I say, grab hold of a wall or something. And we're gonna start by just taking the ankle onto the thigh. Sit your weight back into your heel. Keep your chest lifted. So from the side, it looks like you're going to sit on a chair. The more you can lift your tailbone up, the more of a stretch you'll get in that bent side, in the bent leg side, into the glutes. So you can have the arms out. If you want to deepen the stretch, then just push that knee away and sit further back into your heels and your bottom. And you'll feel that stretch going to the hip. This is a quite a nice one to get good at. One, because it's good for your single leg balance but also it's really easy to do after a run if you've not got any space to get on the floor. So if you're at a race or whatever and you don't really want to sit on the grass because it's soaking wet, it's a nice stretch for the hips before you get in the car to come home. Good, keep the chest up. Good, then come up. We're going to take that foot and take it round behind. So with this one, 
Try not to pull your foot to your bottom too early, okay? What I want you to do instead is scoop the tailbone under, pull your abs in and squeeze and push your hips forward and then bring the heel to bottom if you still need a stretch. All right, so it feels like you're really scooping under with the tailbone, basically so that you create more of the stretch. Try and keep the knee connected to the other one. And then like I say, then you can start pulling the heel towards your bottom. But try and keep that tailbone tuck first. And tall everywhere else, obviously, try and lift up. Nice big breaths as you stretch. Good, release. Let's do the same on the other side. So ankle on thigh, sit back. I can't actually do this on this side because <laughs> since my up, I can't rotate the knee in that position. It's not, not great for it at the moment. Sit back. Chest lifted. Remember, if you want to deepen the stretch, push the knee away. Good, nice big breaths. Lovely. And then come up, same thing, take the foot around behind, scoop the tailbone under and push the hips forward. And then pull your heel to bottom if you need to deepen it again. Nice and tall. So nice big breath so that you aren't gripping or holding the stretch. Lovely, release, shake it off. Last stretch up, open wide. Shake everything off. And we are done for today. Thank you very much.